Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar. All of us at Vizimix are very pleased to have Dr. Victor Atiemo Obang in a series of webinars addressing how early considerations of mixing and stirred vessels can help process development chemists and engineers achieve significant process improvements. Joining Victor will be our Mr. Moshe Ben-Talila, who heads up our technical support department and is an expert user of Vizimix software. During the lecture, you'll be able to write your question in the chat box, and we'll address them at the end or in a mail after the webinar. Today's webinar will focus on Vizimix as a productivity tool for successful research, scale-up, and optimization of processes. So without any further ado, I'll pass the microphone over to Victor, and uh, thanks again, and enjoy today's webinar. Victor, all yours. Thank you very much, Marcy. Um, and welcome everybody who is uh, listening, called in to listen in on this uh, webinar. Um, this is the second, as Marcy introduced. The first one we did, and let me bring up my, for some reason my, my uh, computer is not showing my slides well, but uh, it will come up. But anyway, the first one we did, we talked about processes in the in the chemical and allied industry that require mixing and we we discussed various aspects of it what we are here today to do is to show you a tool that can be put to use to make you productive okay so that's what we're doing and i, I want to start out by telling you a little story uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with AICHE Engage. It, it's, it's, it basically, it's a chat group on AICHE website where people share ideas and ask questions and so on. Anyway, back in 2017, there was this question from Sabine Bruski. It says, I'm looking for resources and guidance to optimize mixing. I welcome suggestions for references. And there were several responses that she received. And she thanked people for responding to her question. But then she followed up and says, I will expand my generic question to say that I'm interested in CSTR mixing. And what well mixed means. How does one determine the optimum degree of mixing? There were many references to books such as the following, which I hope most of you are familiar with. There was also references to such resources as the North American Mixing Forum, and also the Fluid Mixing Processes and Industrial Consortium um, run by BHR, British Hydromechanics Research Group, in the UK. They fund research and produce documentation, correlations, and so on, That and also produce a design tool that uh, a number of you probably have used before. And, and I have used those. I used those two when I was at Dow. But anyway, there was one other response. This response was from Eugenie Slonikov, uh, from solving specialty polymers. And it's interesting that this was the only response that recommended a tool, a specific tool. Now, there are many tools that are out there for doing mixing calculations and so on, but uh, Eugenie recommended Vizimix. And he said, I have a pretty good experience in this application for solving a wide variety of engineering problems. You can visit the company website and see if it matches your needs. Good luck. <laughs> and and um, apparently, Sabina was satisfied because I don't, I, I couldn't see any more follow up on uh, the discussion that was the chatting that was going on. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about Vizimix suite of tools. Back in 2000 or so, I wrote this. Actually, I wrote this at Dow. 
and and uh, Vizimix got hold of it, and it, now you can find this on their website. And basically, what I say here is that Vizimix is a highly accessible PC software for mixing calculations. It's a rating calculation tool for both non-reactive and reactive mixing involving blending, solid suspension, gas dispersion, liquid-liquid dispersion, heat transfer, and instead vessels. Well, when I became familiar with this tool, this was back in 1999, I was curious about it. And actually, I wasn't the only one. There were several people from AICAT and from the NAMP committee who were curious about this tool. But I set out to explore it, and you're going to see some of this exploration that I did. And I found out that it actually provided me with the capability to be able to address most of the mixing problems that we encountered at Dow. And one of the things that it did was that it allowed significant savings in time and cost in exploring effective mixing options for the various processes that I was dealing with. And <clears throat> since that time, I think I was one of the few, first few uh, people who adopted it and it became a global tool in DAO. But since yeah. then, a number of companies have actually adopted this. Here's a, a list of some of the companies. So over 250 companies, customers who use this tool. Now, obviously, you wouldn't have such a large set of customers if the tool was not doing a good job for these companies. So anyway, today what we're going to look at, describing this tool and look at its relevance for mixing calculations, we will also look at the ease of use and talk about its reliability. It's these features of relevance, ease of use, and reliability that have made Visimix Suite of Tools the preferred choice for personnel in process R&D, process engineering, and manufacturing operations in over 200 companies, 250 companies in the chemical and allied industries who deal with processes in stirred tanks. Back in 2011, uh, I and three of my colleagues at Dow, who are by Richard Cook and Cesar Gonzalez, prepared and offered a pre the pre this presentation. And we highlighted how mix Visimix enables the effective capture and use of knowledge of mixing phenomena, fluid mechanics, and then characteristics of mixing equipment, et cetera, at different levels of substitute sophistication to quickly analyze, scale up, design, and troubleshoot mixing processes and stair tanks. Now, today, engineers and scientists have access to several calculation methods and tools, including the BHR tools that I showed you earlier. But often, empirical or semi-empirical correlations that are coded in spreadsheets and other equation solvers are used for the calculation of power draw, blend time, just suspension speed, mass transfer coefficients, et cetera, and so on. And with the advances of computers and computational fluid dynamics codes, it's also possible to perform detailed and in-depth analysis of the characteristics of both macro and micro scale fluid mechanics and stair tanks. Now, significant pro progress obviously have occurred in both approaches in, in, the, in the years past. However, Visimix bridges the two approaches mentioned above, and you'll see some of the, what it does here. It uses models of the transport of momentum, energy, species, and, partic and particles, Kolmogorov's theory of turbulence and panel mixing length hypothesis, plus a simplified multi-zone mixing model to analyze mixing phenomena in a stirred vessel. Calculations are based on models, simplified models of the average tangential velocity 
tangential fluid velocity, the axial fluid velocity, and the macro eddy diffusivities, turbulent energy dispersion in different parts of the volume of fluid in the vessel. And we're going to show you some of that in this presentation. This slide shows, basically shows the interactions of uh, transport phenomena covered in Vizimix and how they are used to address the various uh, mixing systems that are listed over here. So there are hydrodynamics that are dealt with tangential flow, axial circulation and so on that I mentioned. There's calculations of turbulence that are used in heat and mass transfer analysis. The hydrodynamics are also used to, as, to determine or to uh, assess the mechanical stability of the equipment, the shaft and the impellers and so on. Macroscale mixing is used to calculate mixing time, distribution of reactants and so on. So you can, so it's, it's a very, very um, full-fledged tool that addresses a lot of the things that we talked about in the last presentation that you're going to see. Uh-oh. Okay, the slide is not moving. All right, let's go back and see what's that. Okay, there we go. Let's go back and see. All right, there we go. So I'm going to ask um, Moshe and Talila to take over from here and describe to you some of the models that are used in Vizimix. Moshe, are you there? Yes, yeah, thank you very much uh, for the introduction and the explanation. We will come back to you <laughs> after a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, what we we'll, uh, like only to give you some idea about what is the what is going on inside the Vizimix Vizimix products, that uh, and explain a little about the Vizimix model we have, uh, that it is behind the capabilities. And after that, I will open the show for a few minutes only to show to you the uh, simple way to 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 use, so the meaning of this, how to feed that and get results, that in principle is uh, only to feed in some uh, data that uh, you know and you need any way to calculate by correlation, but in this case, you have no correlations. You have a complete model based on physical, uh, physical uh, models and approach to understand the mixing and the influence of the mixing in the process. So. Um, uh, the first that we need to take in consideration is that when we talk about our uh, steel vessel and we see this steel vessel from the top, we uh, can uh, 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 see that the main important part of the momentum transfer, that it is the main part of the uh, mixing uh, phenomena, is happening uh, when we are uh, applying some velocity in uh, some agitator and he's transferring his velocity, his momentum, to the media, okay? And it is dissipated in the media and in the accessories that you have inside the tank and in the wall. So we are doing a macro uh, uh, balance of uh, momentum, and the main idea, as you can see, this is, the moment, this is the agitator from the top, momentum of the bottom, of the blade, of the buffer, of the wall, and the media. And the main important point is, uh, uh, and the second point is that we divide the, the equipment once we know the tangential velocity into many important zones because at every equipment you will see, okay, you can distinguish that you have main two zones. In some distance from the impeller to the wall, we have some main flow that is up in, going up and down. And we are looking for where is the point that the flow change the direction. We divide the equipment in between two zones, and the interaction between the zones are done by uh, uh, diffusivity in the materials and in uh, uh, viscosity too. 
So we divided the equipment in two. You can see this is the shaft of the equipment. This is the agitator. This is the wall of the equipment. And what we'll see is two main flow uh, 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 up and down in the tank. The assumptions that we have uh, in BCMix are the follow. All the initial assumptions are based in fundamental scientific data. We talk about points that you remember when we uh, study, we did some studies about hydrodynamics, we talk about friction uh, factors, we talk about directional flows. So it is a basic uh, uh, development, and really we try to measure what is the part of the energy that we dissipate, uh, what is the fraction factor, what is really the part of the energy that we transfer in the flow, which direction, and so on. And all of this is in the basic part. This is not so correlation that we find some velocity. It's more than this. We try to solve the momentum balance by uh, numerical methods and compare with some results and measurements we have. All parameters of the models are function of basic flow characteristics and not of the equipment specific features. The meaning of this, once we have the equipment in our hands, we take the, the, the accessories inside like a boundary conditions, okay? And we use it like a boundary conditions for every for, for a normal uh, calculations of uh, uh, differential equations. All experimental coefficients in equations have a clear physical meaning and are defined by independent measurements. What is the meaning of clear physical meaning? The meaning of this is that we try to generate some phenomenology knowledge. So every parameter that we fit and we get have some uh, meaning in the uh, uh, explanation of the mixing phenomena. So we talk about energy of dissipation, that it is a function, is defining a Kolmogorov eddy, that is uh, the eddy size, how long this eddy size is, uh, is uh, uh, stay in the, in the media, regarding to Kolmogorov theory, and Prandtl theory. So all of this we have, because by then what we need to do is to try to serve my process, try to understand what this phenomena is influencing my process. So we need to try to characterize the flow through this flow while providing conditions to my process. The results of, the, of modeling are always verified by experimental with agitators and tanks of different types and sizes. And it is very interesting point because we don't release any result if we didn't check it from the lab to the production, it's taking some time, time because we need to find companies a big scale to check our uh, our results. So we are doing, and only once we are completely confident that the results are representative, we are releasing the new version. This is the reason that we're taking time from version to version to uh, release. Uh, a, a new version of new products, new uh, where well, we release uh, rotor state of dispersed emulsification, different impedance, off center, all of this is in our hands, but we need to prove always. All calculation methods have passed at the stage of industrial application, it's explained it before that. So, this is one of the equations, okay? This is the uh, macro momentum uh, uh, balance that should be zero. And you can see that the main important parameter of every one of the momentum balance are the tangential velocity, because by the end, all the momentum that we're transferring us from the impeller to the wall, so the tangential velocity is changing as a function of the radius from the impeller to the wall. So this is the main important parameter. This is the velocity, the main velocity, the meaning of this, the main momentum transfer. Once we know this momentum, this velocity, we measure, we calculate, and we see that it is correlative according to the, the geometry for the tank and the impeller and the accessories, buffers, and so on, we are able to transfer this velocity in the power that we have, uh, the, the other velocities, the actual and some radial uh, uh, way to think, the, uh, uh, the uh, power, and after that, when we have the power, we're able to know what is the, the, the energy of dissipation, and from this, we know to Kolmogorov, uh, Eddy, size, and the time through the Kolmogorov, and in this way, we progress and, to con and, and calculate more and more. So the points that you can see here is the friction factor of Fusion of Reynolds. It's some uh, 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 chart that you, you know well. So what we did, we did the study in the steel vessel is a geometry, like we did in some pipe. So now we have it a little complex, okay? But by the end, it's the same base, okay? We try to know 
which kind of this power is released in some uh, uh, in, in some uh, factor in some friction factors and it is every point that you can see here is a experimental data so you can see here uh, 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 this uh, chart a function of these turbines okay and of course the, the the line is the model and in the in the resistance factor for the tank wall when we take in consideration different dimensions of the same uh, a configuration okay and you can see again the lines are our results and the the, the points are experimental results uh, again with the uh, direction of the baffle and the and the and then the pinch pedal okay we have pinch some angle of uh, in the in the in the agitator and once we finish the macro one we go to the local but it's normal uh, 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 try to generate what happened in uh, fluid elements that are interacting so we use the as you can see in the bottom the mixing length of frontal theory where the l is the the size that are determining the interaction between fluid elements okay uh, and again you can see again the tangential velocity we calculated before that as a part of our uh, results okay uh, once we have the velocities that the main is the tangential one we need to know what is the actual one and some power that we release to the blade okay that the blade is going to the radial one and once we have uh, this and we know what is the power in, in the equipment, we're able to uh, discriminate the, 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 the other velocities that we have. Okay? Again, some results that is combining the uh, uh, flow uh, number with the dimension of the tank in different, uh, different equipment, propeller, uh, plate, plate, plate uh, uh, paddle, and others, okay? uh, and uh, in different Reynolds numbers. Um, when we talk about mixing times, we have to take into consideration the Kolmogorov theory. So you can see here the mixing time as a function of the uh, properties of the media, density, viscosity divided by density, and by the energy of dissipation in the bulk. So for every part of the equipment, you have some eddy size. Once you have the eddy size, you can calculate the time that this eddy dissipates according to the uh, turbulence theory, when we have an eddy, this, uh, uh, we generate an eddy and it is becoming small, small, small until the point, the, 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 the size that the viscous uh, uh, forces are equal to the uh, inertial uh, forces and it will disappear. So this we calculate according to what we did before that. Okay? And we have, some, we have some way to estimate what is the connection between the macro mixing time, that is the homogeneity in the whole equipment, like you have balls, black and white, how long it will take to put black and white together, okay, like a cheese uh, a table, and after that, uh, how long it will take the gray color is regarding to this mixing time, okay, to this the mic micro mixing time. So in this way, we are uh, calculating all of this. Uh, as uh, uh, Victor mentioned before that, uh, uh, we are able to calculate all of this in different kinds of tanks, okay? And uh, uh, the, the, it is a wide range to work, okay? It is not uh, that we are working only on the lab or only on the production equipment. We, we can cover with very small equipment to very, very big, big equipment. Uh, and the, 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 the properties that we can take after that, you can see we can reach to Reynolds that it is 2 million, okay? Or, uh, uh, if we, you feed the, the, the viscosity for 500,000, we are able to calculate and it is true. Uh, so it gives you the wide range of work that normally you are covering in the industry. Um, uh, if you want to see more about the, the model, we have in our website that you are invited to come, uh, the review of mathematical models, and there we explain every main part, so hydrodynamics, turbulent, mixing times, after that, uh, solid distribution, liquid distribution, gas liquid distribution, okay? All of this will explain how, what is the source of this model. And of course, we're very happy you visit us and if you have any question, you can send to us. Now, I would like to uh, maybe uh, show to you in few seconds how is the software uh, easy to use, okay? Accessibility that uh, Victor explained before that, okay? And for this, we have Two points that are very important and very simple to uh, catch. When we are working in our industry, we are uh, taking care about our material. So the main important point is 
my process. I, I need to generate some material, okay? I know that mixing is important, but this is not my goal. My goal is my process. So in the software, you will find this table and more extensive one into the help. And there you will find a connection between your application that can be solid liquid, crystallization, uh, uh, emulsifications or two-phase reactions and so on, and which parameters are important for this process. In this way, we are answering the question that is expected from us. We need to connect between the process and the equipment. And the only way to do it is to understand what is the main, the main important parameters that are coming from the mixing and try to understand the mechanism of the process and ask, okay, my drop size will be uh, here big or small? If we want separate phases, will be big. If we want to generate a multiplication, we will be small. And in this kind of way, we will be able to connect between, to generate a bridge between the process and the equipment. And our work, job become more relevant. So this is in part of the software. It, this table and more extensive one, it is inside the software. The second point is that always you can start to calculate with the size of the equipment, what the material you have, and the software will give you which regime you are, if you are in turbulent or laminar. And once you have it, it is enough to start to calculate hydrodynamic, the power consumption, circulation, then very macro description of the flow. And after that, the local description of the flow. All of this, you don't need more than density, viscosity, and the geometry of the equipment. Once you have it, if you want to know more, and it is important because intuitive parameters like mixing times, pick up from the solids, from the bottom of solids, pick up the solids from the bottom, distribution of the drops. All of these are very uh, intuitive and good parameters that we know that are simple to explain, second, important to the process. And once we have these numbers, it's very easy to us to communicate and to understand how we can connect our resource to the result of the process, okay? And in this way, we generate the bridge that we are looking for. So. In the VCMix uh, software, you can find hydrodynamics, uh, semi-batch or batch or continuous, and steel vessel, of course, single phase mixing, that is time, macro, meso, and micro mixing time. And what is the connection? Well, all of this in the solid liquid distribution, in the liquid liquid mixing, in the gas liquid mixing, in the heat transfer, and of course, protect your equipment by calculating the vibration of the shaft or the uh, torture, uh, the, 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 the torque that will maybe uh, generate some damage to your shaft. So I would like to do now, I would like to open the software two seconds <laughs> because the software is very fast, I can do it in two seconds and show to you how the accessibility, how it's easy uh, to use. So with uh, your permission, this is one of the software, the desktop is normally the same. And what we do is in project new, we give some name, and now the software asks you at the minimum data required. You, you see, you see your tanks. You don't need to go so deep about exactly what is the curvature there. No, the result will be simple and very similar. So don't take care about the specific points. We know which parameters are important. So I will select, for instance, elliptical one. When you click OK, the software asks you, OK, give me the diameter. So if I'm in the lab, let's say two liter, and I feed 1.5 liters. You see immediately how the software fill the uh, parameter that is dependent. If I will click very number, you see it is absurd. So you see this picture is not good. So you can control yourself with no problem. Okay? When you click OK, the software immediately asks, OK, what is your, uh, your buffers? OK, let's say that we don't have buffers or any buffer. Or, for instance, you have different kinds of impellers that, as you can see, you have pure radial, pure axial in between them, some hydrodynamic generic equipment. If you go down, you see a, a glass line with the curvature of them. Maybe will be no gas line you can use because by then the geometry is generating some boundary condition that we use in order to solve. And if you don't know any one of them is not part of your equipment, you can use always alternative imperial, and by knowing the generic power number, we are able to calculate every parameter that I show to you now. Okay, so I will use, for instance, uh, uh, this, uh, this one, okay, one of them. When you have click on multi-stage, different imperial is possible to do, 
And when you click single, you see the software ask you, give me the diameter. If I give a very big number, it will tell me this is the maximum in good mixing practice. If I click zero, it will give me this, this is the minimum in order to generate a good mixing there. So let's go to, let's say, 70. The number of blades, let's say we have three. The width of the blade, 70% is about 10 or 10%. Sorry, 10% to 10 to 20% of the diameter of the impeller. The distance from the bottom is 30. The rotation speed while in the lab, let's say, is 600. And the motor power, we don't use this number. We only compare with the mixing, mixing power we calculate. But in order to protect your equipment, you provide us and we see is our motor mixing power is more than 70% of your motor power, you will have uh, some notification that keeping you fixed inside good mixing practice, okay? For instance, your, your, your mixing power is more than a low weight or a, you need to check it, something like this. You click OK. Now we finish to fit all the geometry, all the operation. Now what is the process? The minimum materials inside density and viscosity. So if you give some density, you can use a rheology like Newtonian media for uh, companies that are doing some synthesis, low viscosities, or companies that work in modeling formulations. Sometimes you have non-Newtonian media. I'm using this case of Newtonian media, and my viscosity can be two. You see, when you click there, you finish to fit the data. This is all the history. So we don't need more. And in this way, we're able to generate in a simple way, a model that will give you some results that are relevant for you. Which results is in simple? Calculate, you see all the menu here. If you go to hydrodynamics, you see immediately, oh, you see some notifications take care, gas vibration, so the impeller, a vortex go to the impeller. When you click there, you have the solution. Click enter, get results. Energies of displacement, click enter, get results. Mixing time, click enter, get the results in different scales, of course, micro and macro mixing, main period of circulation. For every other unit operation, like for instance, distribution of solids, you will need to add more data. You need to add the data of the liquid, the pure liquid, the concentration of the solids you have in your tank, the density of your solid, the pure uh, particle density, and some particle size DV50 and DV95. When you click there, OK, immediately we see that you see some solids, so maybe you need to change the average. But when you click OK, you see immediately complete suspension is questionable in your tank. Take care. You have solids maybe in the bottom. And now some description about the distribution of the solids as a function of the position. This is the bottom of the tank. This is the top of the tank. And this is the deviation from the average. So we have about 30% deviation from the average. We have more in the bottom than in the top. Another one point that I want to show to you is possible to see the flow patterns of your equipment. In this case, you can see very big vortex. Also, I can reduce the RPM to 300, let's say. And now the vortex will be less. And we can see what happened in three dimensions. OK, so some fluid elements moving in uh, three dimensions well, with, the, with the viewer we will be able to see the same equipment that I save now, okay, but in three dimensions. All of this, as you can see, very simple to do. We can uh, set some input points. You see input point here, the input point there. And when you click OK here, you can see how is the fluid elements moving here. When we don't have buffers, you see that it's very difficult to combine the bottom to the top. It can explain many things, but the more important point, you can explain to people that are not expert on mixing what you are doing in a very simple way and explaining this way how to progress. So I uh, covered the main, this main part and I would like to invite uh, uh, Victor maybe uh, to progress with the presentation, okay? So we, uh, yes, I, let me only, we are here. Uh, uh, sorry, one minute more. Of course, we can change the units. Uh, I can show to you how how to do it. Okay, you can see here. You see all the units, or uh, 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 the the 
the results that you can fill there, you can navigate between them with no problem. When you go to, uh, uh, to this point, you can edit every parameter you want with no problem immediately. Okay, so I will pass the, uh, the presentation to Victor. He will, of course, explain more about his uh, experience with the software. Please, Victor. Okay, all right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, okay, show my screen. So let's move, let's move on to uh, way back. I mean, he's covered, Boshe has covered all of these. So let me just, I'm now going to go and talk a little bit about my initial experience with this tool. I mean, you've seen, this is a slide that I want to share here. Where is this slide? Okay, so you've seen how the interface is simple, intuitive, and context relevant. Very easy to input data and do calculations. You can change units. It's a fast solver. You get but the key thing that I want to mention here is this. It, you know, the, the, there is nowhere in this tool where you can say, okay, I, this is the desired process result that I want. And so you tell me how to run my equipment to get the desired process result. This is a rating tool, basically. So you have to provide the input, and then it will do the calculations for you. But as you could see, how quickly you can do these things, so it allows you to perform parametric investigations, explore many, many options very quickly to gain insights into your process. That's what makes it a productivity tool. <clears throat> but of course, if if it's easy to access and it's easy to do calculations and so on, quickly do calculations very quickly. But if the results are useless, I mean, it's still it is not a very useful tool. So when I first got this tool, one of the first things that I did was okay to convince myself that indeed it was reliable. And so what I did was that I did I did some uh, comparison evaluation with uh, established data and, and established correlations, including some of the BHR data and so on. And the, one of the first things that I did was actually we had within Dow, we had measured some uh, LD, we, we had actually acquired some LDA data of the uh, uh, tangential velocity for uh, PV, pitch plate turbines and also Russian turbines. And so I compared what Visimus could do. So you can see the comparison over here. I did that for uh, this turbine, radial uh, this turbine also. Um, I looked at uh, what had been published <clears throat> in other uh, places. Um, this is what that was published in 1996. Here I compared the vortex there. Now, it, it's important to remember that, as Moshe described, all the modeling is based on establishing a reliable tangential velocity. And so one of the th first things that I said to myself was that, okay, all right, so if I have non-baffled vessel, if I'm not able to predict the vortex depth, then there's something wrong with the tangential velocity. And so these are some of the results that I did, and you can see how well it did. It did very, very well. Also, this is its ability to, the tool ability to duplicate or to represent the power number for a Russian turbine for all these various Reynolds numbers. Here are some results for uh, uh, dual impellers. And then some um, mixing time correlations that I looked at. Here's some additional ones. And then I looked at, uh, actually I happened to be working on uh, a liquid liquid mixing problem. So I did, I also checked it before I actually applied it to the system. And this is, you can see how well it does and its ability to be able to represent uh, the change in drop size as a function of the impeller speed and so on uh, for different conditions. So, Obviously, I explored other tools, and what I what I became convinced of was that there was really no tool with a similar coverage for processes in dead vessels that I, I could get my hands on. 
I mean, there were tools, I mean, some different companies, uh, Lightning had a tool, Kaminia had a tool, and so on. Um, uh, Philadelphia Mixers had a tool, but there wasn't any tool that was as comprehensive as what I found in, in Vizimix. And the thing that I liked about it very much was its ability to allow me to do some very quick analysis of mixing processes to gain insights, uh, which then helped us to reduce the risk associated with scale up, scaling up and scaling down. Um, there's one other tool that we haven't mentioned yet is called uh, Visi Excel, which allows you to summarize your results in a, in a project database that can readily, be, can readily be shared. So the bottom line is that here is a tool that can save you significant time. And of course, time is money. And there's no question that people who have used it have found this value, this value and that's why the, the use of Vizimix continues to, to, uh, to grow. So this is what we set out to sh share with you about the tool. Um, the next session, we will talk specifically about how people have used this to improve their processes and to save money for their companies. Um, obviously, as you saw the list, I mean, the people continue to use it because it works for them and they're able to save money and so on. So that's what we'll, we'll do in the next, in the, in the third uh, series of the, of the webinar. Uh, so right now we thank you and we'll be willing to entertain any questions or comments that you have. Marcy, over to you. Are there any questions for uh, Victor or Moshe? I, uh, Moshe, do you see any questions yeah. on your end? Did people type in questions as we were giving the presentation? Yeah, yes, one minute, I will, uh, I will see. And uh, anyone, if you can raise a hand in the, pa in the, in the panel and you can uh, ask questions by right. If you want to speak, tell me. We have some minutes. Maybe we can, can have uh, we have a time for one or two questions, and we'll give you the the microphone. Yes, we have one here, Rene Hills. Okay, please, Rene. Rene, you can speak. Rene, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Yes. Thank you. Please. Sorry. <clears throat> I, I pushed actually the the button because I had uh, some some problems with the sound in between. No, uh, no problem. So actually, I don't have a question. Sorry. Ah, but okay, thank you very problem. much for this presentation. No yeah. problem. Thank you. And uh, we have a question from Osi Freitas. How can the three D simulation be printed? No, the, the the simulation cannot be printed. The simulation you can catch in any capture uh, software that it's normally free in the web. <laughs> any capture of a screen you can use in order uh, to generate your own video. If you have the software, of course, you can use. The software is not a hard uh, power of computer memory use. It's simple. So I use the software now in my laptop that I use with no high level, okay? Very normal one will work well, so no problem about it. We have another question here about Mr. Tom Liu. Is a, a PowerPoint will be provided? Of course, we will organize all the meeting, including the recording. We will record this meeting, and we will, uh, of course, uh, send to all the people that were here some link, okay, with the presentation and the, and the, uh, the, the, the copy of the PowerPoint and the, um, recording all, all the all the seminar all the meeting now another question is it possible to calculate droplet size distribution in liquid liquid mixing of course yes we have a complete uh, model about it uh, for low and high uh, shear uh, rates and uh, yes it is very important we know it's part of the formulation part of these two phase reactions 
and we have even for very high shear rates, we have rotor stator that we apply high shear rate in order to calculate the droplet with uh, uh, with no problem. If you want to see the resas and eta, we can of course uh, uh, have a, a meeting separate with you and your company and show to you how it can work. Uh, oh, Odair Araujo, how are you? So you have a question. Is the software can predict phase separation when you use liquid non-miscible? Uh, directly uh, in the default, you will not find it, but one of the parameters when we calculate liquid-liquid mixing uh, uh, indicate you how will be the quality of the separation after that, okay? Uh, we have another question. Oh, where is Eugene? How are you from Afton? So for scaling up suspension, it is good idea to keep power pen volume constant. Not uh, only this, but maybe, uh, Victor, if you want to uh, explain more about the connection between uh, solid liquid and power per volume. Okay. Well, the, the, the answer that I would give is that, again, you can use I mean, when you're scaling up or scaling down you can actually check it with the tool so you've done your work at the, at the lab at a, a given scale and you know what conditions allow you to get the distribution of solids that you desire for your process when you go to what you when you model the bigger equipment this the scale up version of the equipment that you want to use you can actually run many cases there and find out what conditions give you similar process results compared to what you found in the laboratory. And that would tell you whether it's part of volume that is maintained in achieving those process results or not. You, you can ask, you can use the tool to ask these questions and answer them yourself. Okay. But in, in general, in general, though, for solid, for solid suspension work, scale up is usually done by power per volume. But I mean, but don't don't make don't assume anything. Check it out with the tool. It allows you to do that checking very very quickly. Does that help? Uh, let, let's see. let's hear from where is he, Gene. I will give him uh, the microphone maybe. Wacy, do you want uh, some uh, remark on it? Uh, uh, hello, uh, this is with Ian from Afton. Um, yes, uh, uh, when I uh, deal with the uh, scan of, of like a suspension, a liquid in liquid or a solid in liquid, I usually use uh, the constant uh, like specific uh, energy for uh, uh, the guidance. Because I think uh, from somewhere I saw some slides that uh, a general a rule of thumb for uh, scan up uh, suspension is to keep the um, specific energy constant. Because most of the time in, uh, in my company, it, it's not easy to do a lot of a study in lab and in a pilot plan for some like uh, the correlation. So, um, most of the time, I just use the with the mix for some uh, simple calculation to, for right. the direction. And that's the that's the whole point of having a productivity tool is that you can actually check these calculations before you actually go run your process, whether you are in the pilot plant or in the lab or in the plant. I mean, you can actually check it. Yeah, I can I can tell you more that uh, it is not a. We have companies that are changing only in the production scale, okay? But because they did so many calculations around the conditions they find, at least a single change, a, a, a simple change in the operation sometimes is doing the, the work. Now, anyway, if you have no, uh, you have, uh, because mixing is multidimensional phenomena, you cannot be always uh, use only one parameter. Sometimes the power per volume is describing some uh, point of view, but the mixing time is the describing the, the, the capability to interact to the medium, okay, of the solids. Yeah. So we need to take care, and because we have many parameters that are describing different point of view, they will help you in order to have a complete picture about what you are doing. And after that, select for all these combinations one, two, points that maybe you would like to 
eh, eh, de, eh, eh, run experience, experiment. You don't need to run all. You, need, you can run two or three, and this will give you all the trends about what you're looking for. Yeah, uh, use a tool. It's very, I mean, the, the, the reason why we call it a productivity tool is that it, it, it that in, indeed makes you productive. You can ask all these kinds of questions and try and explore them with the tool before you even go into the laboratory or pilot plant or in the production plant. And that's that's really the, the value of a tool like this. Okay, thank you. I have another three questions here from Abhishek Maharla, Maharia. Hi, we have a question. Does the software calculate the impact of difference injection points for Example, uh, for example, bottom half high. Yes, we we can uh, locate the uh, feeding point and calculate the deviation of the concentration as a function of the time around this point in any point in the tank. Uh, when you fit in the top, in the middle, in the bottom, at any place and any coordinate inside the equipment, it's possible to do it. The last question is the same. That is for CSTR. Yes, exactly for CSTR. And for VEGE, we have a capability, for instance, the CSTR, we can add two points at different places and uh, calculate what is the uh, outstream uh, composition when you have reaction, when you have blending. All of this is possible when you have solid liquid. All of this is really possible with no problem. If you want to see it more, of course, we can provide to you in your company specifically uh, in a specific presentation for uh, you. So, you have any other questions? We are here and we can uh, progress. We have another two minutes for it. Uh, have you have you have you checked all the questions that were posted? Yes, yes, yes. I am looking. I am going par, by one per one. Oh, I forgot one. Mr. Dinesh Malvilla, that is our, our representation in India, only sent to you, good to hear Victor after a long time. <laughs> ah, Dinesh, how are you? <laughs> so, thank you very much, Dinesh. We're very happy to hear you here. And for you, it's evening, so you are maybe eating a, a dinner. So, <laughs> And uh, Dinesh answered you that he's fine and enjoying. And uh, thank you very yeah. much for all. I see that, uh, ah, can you include internal coil? Yes, we have a complete uh, guideline. For, for heat transfer. Yes. Yeah, for heat transfer, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We, have, we have a complete uh, train uh, uh, guideline how to do, uh, how to fit internal coils in calculations and the capabilities to heat and cool. Uh, account for the pressure change. Uh, can you, yes, how do you account the pressure change during the pros, the mixing process. Okay, at this point, uh, as you okay, know, we, read, read the question. Read the question again. Yes, yes. Can uh, how do you account the pressure changes during the mixing process, like a pressurized vessel? Pressure change. I mean, you're talking about in a gas liquid system. I think so, but even now we can answer about gas liquid, and after that about only liquid. Okay. Uh, so, if you want, uh, Victor, to uh, to answer. Well, uh, if you add if you're adding gases to a vessel and you're dissolving the gases, I mean, obviously, when when you dissolve the gases, you're going to decrease the pressure. But I mean, I as far as I know, I have never tracked the pressure in the vessel. I don't think that's a parameter in the tool to check the pressure in the vessel. And acid mm -hmm. changes when you are dissolve, dissolving the gas in the in mm -hmm. the liquid. Yes. I don't know. It, I, don't re, I don't remember that. I don't think I've ever encountered yeah. that. Yeah. I, I I I you know it's now very popular uh, fermentation. So part of in the fermentations, uh, oh, okay. they they are controlling the flow the gas flow to the media with some heat space because this equipment is very big, so they have some uh, 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 positive pressure. Okay. So. Yeah. The answer is the follow. When you uh, feed the data about the gas liquid, you need to you need to know what is the the, so the solubility of the gas in the media, and it's a function of the pressure. So you need to know about Henry constant. 
But mm -hmm. once you are in the liquid media, liquid media is uh, in in incompressible uh, 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 material. So the mixing is not changing because you have pressure because the liquid is incompressible. Correct. Correct. Okay? So this will not change. Uh, and we are not monitoring the the pressure. We are monitoring the flow, the gas flow that you are entering to the liquid phase and how which how many how much of this material for instance oxygen oxygen will be soluble it will will be passed to the liquid phase okay so we have the drops and after that we have the capability to know how much of this uh, oxygen enter really to the media it will be dissolved in the media that your microorganism will uh, will eat and will uh, press in a good way so Liquid liquid way are to work. Uh, how do you how do the three state mixing profiles, solid, liquid, and gas mixing? Uh, what exact parameter we need to consider scale up? Okay, this is a, a, a Mr. Harry Prasa. It is a, a, a very good issue. Normally we divide it between two main zones, so liquid, solid, or gas liquid. And we can explain to you more deeply scale state uh, case. For instance, hydrogenation, so something like this. We have good presentations on it, but it is an extensive one. We need another meeting in order to explain it. We're very happy to explain to you. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for all of you that uh, were here with us. Marcy, do you want to summarize? Because we are at the end of the time. Well, I'd like to. Yes, once again, thank you very, very much to uh, you, Victor, and to you, Moshe, for providing a very, very informative and interesting uh, webinar today. We hope that everyone who attended uh, really enjoyed and got some good information. Uh, and we're looking forward to uh, seeing you at the next webinar, which will be taking place on uh, Wednesday, November 6th, which will uh, focus on the illustrative cases of using VisiMix for effective process improvement. So, uh, and once again, if anyone has any questions that they'd like to send uh, post webinar to us, uh, and we'll and we'll try to address them, um, you can send them to uh, Moshe B at VisiMix.com, or if it's easier for you, info at VisiMix.com, and we'll do our best to address those questions. And once again, thank you all for attending. Thank you very much for all. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.